Hi, this is Toby from Toby Urban Sketch, and today I'm going to do a short video on the importance of shapes in our sketching and how just using shapes can really simplify something complex and give us an easy and interesting sketch. So, and like as ever, if you if you do enjoy this video or if you enjoy my channel, please like and subscribe. It's a huge support to my little channel. Uh, the, the equipment I'm using today is this um, Cardi Paper sketchbook. It's my September sketchbook. It's a new shape, six by six inches, a rough surface with these interesting edges here, using a couple of different pens. So I'm going to start with this um, Rotring Tiki Graphic pen, 0.3 millimeters. I'll probably be using a Pentel gel pen, and I'm Still using some etcher brushes at the moment just because they're the ones I'm carrying around most of the time. I've got a size 6 and a size 8. And I'll talk you through the watercolours as we use them. The, um, the sketch I'm doing today is from a photo I took just a couple of days ago of Piccadilly Circus. It's of the, the building where they've got the Body Works exhibition. I'll put a uh, the details of it in the description so that you can Google it and find your own reference image. And if you want to do your own thing, you can do your own thing as well. So let's get started. Going straight in with the pen takes a little bit of confidence, but again, that's why simplifying and just focusing on shapes is really important. So what we've got is a quite a big building. It's going to fill most of our most of our um, our page, and there's only one one point of perspective. So we're looking at a street going that way. So let's start with the biggest side of the building. And what have we got? So I'm just going to start by getting the edge of this building in. Just really loosely and roughly. And then above that, we've got the roof and a little balcony. So we've defined the, the longest edge here. And we can just start working some shapes in. So we've got the door. Door is just there's an oval above it, it's just a rectangle. Because it's on an angle, we've just got to turn it into sort of parallelogram with the sides. And the front or the edge here forms a rectangle, another rectangle, another rectangle, and the roof is actually just a continuous line. So let's get that in. That defines our perspective. Everything else can work off there. So in the middle of the building, we've got the main facade. Because it's on an angle, the middle is actually shifted over here a bit. So we start there. And that's the main sort of face and the main entrances are down here. Let's get a little bit of shape. And you see, all I've done is a big triangle. And behind it, a little couple of other triangles. And then our horizon line is going to be about here. So horizon line is the eye level. So there's another sloping feature coming across. It's going to be sloping down very slightly. While the bottom edge is going to be coming up. And then we can work in some of these shapes. So we've got pillars coming down. You know, and essentially pillars are going to start at least just as lines. They've got shapes, so we'll go up and down. At the base of them, they've got these squares. And these squares sort of lead all the way down. Okay, like that. And then let's just define some more elements. So this edge comes along and it goes all the way around here. And then this is symmetrical, but because of the perspective and the distance, this side's smaller. So we're sort of copying what we did over here, but on a more narrow scale. Let's just get some more bulk into these pillars. So you can see one principle I use. You do these fine lines when you're working it out. And then you come back in with bolder lines when you're a bit more certain. And it's got a sort of 
balcony going on. Again, we're trying to simplify things, so we don't need to do that yet. We can work out if it's necessary. We can bring more shape in here, so the these edges they they have a lip they come round. There's little lines here. And let's get our first window in because the windows add a huge amount to the feeling of a building and the the shape. You can immediately tell how grand it is. This isn't got a window, but it's got a little bit of texture. And then you've got this lip continues round. And then another balcony on the top with another little top as well. If you use it just like ellipses and long straight lines, we'll add in some of these lines to define that we've got a little balcony. And the same up here. We don't need to be too careful yet. Now what else can we add in? It's, it's rather complex in this corner, but I think we're going to go for it. So we've actually got the tube coming out. And again, we just focus on the different shapes we can see. So we've got a lamppost, we've got the banner, the sort of name of the tube stop. The perspective will bring the bottom of this down here. And we could join that up as well. Then we've got a railing. The railing is going to be sort of just below our eye line, so it slopes upwards. It's also on a curve, which which is a little bit confusing for drawing. But that's about right. And then it comes across here. And again, we're just adding a few more lines as we become certain where things are. Giving these things a bit more shape as we go. And then we need to give this the, the shape. It's, it's going down, so we need to clearly show that. We can add in, there's a railing at the front, which will help if we just bring it as a line down like that and show. So instantly, by getting something going down there, it Im immediately shows us that th this is, you know, an empty box, if you like, facing downwards. And just adding in these lines to give a bit of shape again. Okay, so it's starting to come together. We've only been going seven minutes or so. There's a road along here, so I think we need to contextualize this a bit. And there's lots of other things going on in the foreground. We'll, we'll start adding a few in, going gently. So we'll add these traffic lights in. Okay, and what have we got? A line and a rectangle and some circles. There's always a traffic light on the other side, and there is here as well. Again, just take note of the perspective. It's got to be, it's going to, it's sort of just about eye level or above. So these things are going to be about the same, even though they're further away, going to be about the same height. And you can see they look about right. So we know we've done the perspective right there. Let's start building in some of the stuff here. Okay, so by adding a few details to our pillar, we'll give it a bit more shape and then we can bring these lines across and replicate our windows. We're not too fussed, or at least I'm not too fussed about the exact proportion or number of windows. It does so happen that in this reference there are three windows, so I managed to get it right. But with a pen you might get it slightly wrong and that's all right. You just, you know, make an artistic decision to, to change what's there so that it fits with what you're drawing and what you want to draw. No one's going to know, even if you know this building really well, no one's ever going to go, oh, I'm sure that there's 
there's an extra window you missed out. The fun flag, yes, yeah, so we'll pop that in. And we'll just start adding, you know, we've got these basic shapes, so when we've got them, we can start actually just adding a few details on top. And we can add the fact that it's, so we've got a hollow inside, and that underneath there's some texture. And then we can bring this line across and keep it going. Now in here we've got different windows, so they're fun to add in. And just make sure they're really different so we can tell we haven't just done something different by accident. And the same up here, these are different shape. And then again, we're going back to our old pattern, but it's further away. So everything's a bit smaller than the ones which are up close. And we can lose some of the detail as well because it's further away. Let's just get a bit of texture in these sort of blank areas. So let's do that. Now we, the bottoms always are, of, of these big buildings are always a bit complicated because there's people walking along. There's lots of different, in this case, there's a news agent at the bottom and different doors and things. So I leave it blank before I decide how much of that detail we're going to add in front. And then I start with the things that are closest. So in this instance, let's do, there's a little cab here. And again, we're just focusing what the shapes are. So the top of the roof is just visible and it's a sort of flattened rectangle. Then the, the boot uh, back window rather is there. It's another rectangle. And then you've got the, the lights. I find that putting the lights on a car really immediately makes it obvious what it is. Same with the windows there. And then it gets lost behind there, which is fine. And we can add in there, the, the windows, do some lines to show that they're really there. I put the other wheel in. You know, definitely a car, that's fine. We've got the underground logo here, which is very recognisable. So just putting in bold lines hides the, the stuff we had before. We can pop, there's a, a London bus. So these guys are always a little awkward to draw, but you just need the idea because it's it's getting out towards the area without much detail. So just need the idea of a bus-like thing. You see immediately you put those lights in, you can tell it's a vehicle. Put the wing mirrors on is another good way of doing it. It's just those details which your eye is expecting, lights, Wing mirror immediately tells you this rectangle is a bus. So where else can we go? In the front here, we've got some news agent type um, building. It might actually be a tourist bus ticket office, but that kind of feel. So we just get in a rectangle, triangle. We just get the perspective about right. We can put a person in. And we can put some other people queuing there. I've done a, a separate video on people, but just in brief, if I put another person in, you'll see how I do it. It's just a circle, a rectangle or a triangle, and then another triangle. And it's an easy person. This one's probably coming across the street. And then with bearing in mind perspective, if we put one in in the foreground, their heads, their heads at the horizon line. So you have to keep their heads level because it's a flat ground and their feet come down lower. There we go. You've got a few little people in there now. So let's start by adding in some details to the front of our building. We've got these arches coming in. They're behind this now, so we don't need to put too much detail in. These pillars come down. So let's get them in because they're pretty fundamental to what's going on here. And then underneath, you can't see much, so we don't need to draw too much detail, but we just get in the idea of maybe some doorways, certainly some shadow, 
some repeating patterns which suggest something going on there. We'll try and just get a very loose idea of those arches again. And so now having done all that, it's going to redefine some of our edges and see what we've got. You can see this, this cardi paper is um, it's very absorbent, so pen lines sort of spread quite a lot, which is fine, interesting. You just have to know what you're working with, or, or at least recognize what you're working with as you go. Right, let's put some more details in these sort of grand windows. I think when you look, you're just looking, where's our complexity? It's sort of here and moving up. So that's our, our focal point sort of moves around like that. So with that in mind, we just want to make sure lots of the bold tones and colours are in this area. And we can do that with a few more gestural lines and things like that. And we can add our little writing if we like. Don't have to do that. I, sometimes it adds, sometimes it takes away. But it's always an experience. And then we'll add some of the background buildings. So technically we're now doing a bit of two point perspective because we've got something going that way, vanishing point, which is way over here. And we've got another building going this way with a separate vanishing point over here. And then there's actually another building coming this way, which we can just get in. And just doing these loose lines lets you know that there's something important here. But we don't have to add more than that. We get, well, I think we get the idea. We can add some people as well. Just People can just be scribbles, especially if it's a crowd. All right. I think that's quite an interesting sketch already. We haven't added the colour yet. Just get these sort of perspective lines in. This is the, the pavement, the paving slabs. It shows us where things are going. And when there's a bit of blank page, it can be nice just to have something giving us a bit more direction. So what's the next stage? It's, of course, adding a little bit of colour. So I do like starting with the, the sky. And what I tend to do is add a bunch of water to the sky. I'm going to keep that flag white because it could be fun to have the flag as a little point of sort of bright colour at the end. Now the, the actual picture is somewhere between, to be honest, bland and moody. So I'm going to use some duller blues mixed with a little bit of neutral tint. So the mix I'm using here is um, Cerulean Chromium, which is a, I think it's a Daniel Smith only colour. And then also some neutral tint. And what I love about neutral tint is it, if you touch it, just look how it blooms out. You don't really have to do anything with it. It's just really happy to do its own thing. We can bring it in this instance, I think, all the way down. And just add a bit more intensity. And then find some more blues in there as well. And just while it's wet, we can move it around, make it interesting. All right. So that's that. And that, now that we've brought the sky all the way down here, I think it's a good idea just to make these things sort of continue down. So I know this is a building, but let's get that blue just dripping down the page. And coming into some of that neutral tint, 
which can help define some of these shapes as well. So it can define the edge of the road, the edge of the pavement. And I think if we keep keep coming around as well, we'll find we can just use it to really get under everything, add some shadows and shade already in. So it's already lifted this building right towards us. This, of course, is the traffic light, which will add some colour to. So initially, we'll just try and paint around it a bit. And then um, we've got things like this tube, which we want to definitely show is different. So if we just drop some really intense pigment in there, and then bring it out and just let it wash down again. We may want to do another layer down here just to, to show just how different that area is. Okay, so we've got some interesting shapes happening already. Let's get the bus window, taxi window. Now, if I haven't done that, I'm going to keep going with all our little windows and just see what it looks like. I say all. I'm going to do many of them. And then add some blue into some of them. You know, the reflections of the sky tend to be stronger in the upper windows just because of the angle you're looking at. This is about choices to make it interesting now. We're using the reference image to understand where the light and shade is, but we're also using, you know, what we want the image to look like. Having done all of this, I want a bit more intensity in the sky because I, you know, as it's dried and as we've added intensity elsewhere, we've lost some of that sort of stunning push forward effect of the sky. And again, just bring that down. All right, so how are we going to make this building more interesting? Well, what are the colours in the actual building? They're quite sort of muted, a little bit warm. So we'll probably make them a bit more interesting. I'm going to start off with a bit of raw sienna. And I'm just going to drop it in at the top. And again, just use it. I'm not worried that it's going to mix with these windows but use it to just outline some of these shapes. So I'm just coming along the boundaries, I'm keeping it fluid. And just see what happens. I, I, I like these effects where things blur. We can come back in, add more in places if we want. And I wanna add some complementary colors. So a bit of yellow just gives the idea in there of bit more light and then the the far side of the building is sort of fundamentally less detailed and less exciting so rather than having blotchy colour I'm just gonna put a loose wash over. I want to bring out some of these reds as well so wherever there's writing in this there's um the writing's in red and Red's a really interesting colour to dot in in places or even go a bit more extreme and make a feature. There's lovely reds in all these arches. So we can just highlight them. There's reds at the top here and here. And this is where I said maybe this flag would be a nice point of colour just to bring things together. That's really intense pigment in there. Now our bus, do we want colour on it? That's a question now. I think, why not, a little bit. And I'm just going to use a sort of, this is a, a mix of that same red, but also with some uh, quinacridone magenta. I'm just going to let it bleed around so it's not 
too well defined. And I'm also going to drop it in in other places because otherwise you've got this one strange red going on without any context. Let's see what happens with a few drops. So what's missing? Well, I'm going to do some raw sienna mixed with some neutral tint to bring out the bottom of this building and the, the areas which are more in shadow. So I like that. Let's just get it a little bit more intense. So a bit more raw sienna. So watercolour for me is all about sort of variations. You're just trying to get, you know, I don't, I don't like having flat washes. You want any any area, just have little variations in colour, in tone, in warmth maybe. And that's what we're doing gradually here. And I'm going to get some of our shadow colour, this sort of mix of our chromium and neutral tint to just show the shape under these arches. So it's definitely darken up there and down here. And just come back in again and like I said we can re-emphasize these windows now. That blue is nice, so let's get some blue in again. Not worrying about being too neat. Just moving around and, and feeling our way through what we think the picture needs or the picture can take or okay. And then we can get some of this really dark. You know, so we're working in layers. We started off with a loose wash. And as we move closer and closer to the finish, we're getting more intense with our colors. We're getting more intense with the shadows and and where, you know, where we're dropping in more extremes. Now there's another really obvious place for a nice patch of red. And that's our tube sign here. Because you know, if anyone's been to London, you'll know all the tube signs have this classic red and blue in the middle like that. And let's indeed darken up there so we get even more shape and understanding of what's going on. All right. So how's that looking so far? It's quite, I think it's pretty interesting and that's what I'm going for most of the time. I'm not looking for something perfect, something interesting is what I want. Just going to let it dry and then we'll see if there's anything else we can do. And there we are, as if by magic, it's dried already. So I'm going to go back in. I'm actually going to go in with a 0.1 um, pen because when the paper's had watercolour on it, it tends to be very absorbent, even more than before. I'm going to redefine some of our shapes, really loosely interesting lines. And just some gest gestural marks where I think something else can be added or, you know, parts of this roof look bland. So just getting in these shapes. And just, you know, you can see I haven't actually taken the pen off yet. I don't need to. I might at some point. I probably will. But you don't need to, to create something interesting. You can do it quickly. You can make mistakes. Mistakes become part of the process. And just getting these in. Gonna Add a bit of tone just with the pen to the back of this building, just to whoop, make it look completely different from the sky. And I think it's important that we just redefine this bus and get some of these windows. And again, we're just it's all just shapes, it's all just shapes. Now we've got the colour, we can use the what the colour's done to guide us a bit more. Let's 
dark out these windows as well. These windows can become more interesting, more of a feature. And this one can become a bit more interesting. But again, it's it's the the edge of our or sort of focal point here, so we don't want to draw the eye too much to it. Right, where else can we go? These these windows need something extra. And we can we can join them up and these these lines which are joining things, they draw the eye, they're interesting, they don't have to be perfect, they don't have to be things which are you know realistically there. Get these people back a bit. Yeah, as you add colour, the the colour, although it's transparent, it does cover up some of your lines, especially if you're going really loose like we have. So it's no bad thing to just go back in and add those shapes in again. And I just, you know, defining a bit more what this is by adding some windows and the shape of this building as well. And let's get this pavement in. Now one thing I haven't decided is completely what to do with this traffic light. I think I'm tempted to add shape by using the black pen, but to leave it white so it's a sort of very contrasting thing. And we can do the same with this one. And if I bring that in, yeah, now if we make the back of the taxi white, uh, black as well. There we go. Now we've got that person sort of jumping out at us a bit more as well. So what else can we do? Well, I'm going to grab my lid. Oh, I think it's gone forever. I'll find it later. We can go in with this, the white, the white um, gel pen. And this is my favourite thing to use. I've tried all sorts like Posca pens and, and other alternatives, but this is a Pentel gel pen. You can see how much I've used it. And it just, it layers nicely. It comes in, it's not too bold, but it definitely sits on top of the watercolour. Now adding in some texture to windows can be a nice way of making it a bit more interesting. I want to um, bring forward a few things like the tops of these posts. And I also want to just outline a few of our signs and even this person I think I can just neaten up some of the lines okay same with this traffic light just making them a bit more uniform same with all these people just drop in some white Sort of covers up a little bit of our mistakes from earlier or whatever we decided we want to change. I think that's that's enough. We'll do a couple of texture lines in there. And then we just go back in now and with a black pen we can refine some of those white marks. We can add intentional black marks. And there we go. I think that, let's just make that a bit more interesting as well. I think that's that's done. So if I just put my signature at the bottom, and I'll bring it up to show you. So I think that's pretty interesting, definitely expressive. I think it took about half an hour in total, but all sorts of complexities very much distilled down into simple shapes, squares, triangles, circles, even the people are just shapes. Everything in here is just shapes. And then the colours we use along boundaries, we we use inspiration from the reference, but we don't have to stick to it exactly. And we can end up with a something interesting that we can be proud of. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, if you did, please like, uh, comment, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Uh, is, a, is a real help to my channel if you do subscribe. Um, it helps the old YouTube algorithms. 
So I hope you enjoyed this video and um, have a good rest of your day.